Hi there, and welcome back. Um, this is Nigel Quinnin, VP of Development at Lumenbox. Um, this is the fifth installment of our seven-part video series installing Asterisk 13, UniMRCP, and Lumenbox 13.1. In this episode, we're going to be installing the Asterisk UniMRCP modules. Again, if you remember, we installed these previous uh, things in uh, earlier videos. Uh, this is going to be the final step needed for the UniMRCP to communicate uh, with Asterisk and allow Asterisk to communicate using MRCP with the LumenVox speech services. So again, uh, somewhat confusing. Let me go back to slide here. Somewhat confusing are these three steps. So the installing the UniMRCP dependencies, uh, which are the APR libraries and the SOFIA SIP libraries, which are needed before you can install the UniMRCP library itself. Again, these two things have nothing to do with asterisk so far. So this mod, this this installation, this step that we're working with right now is the part that connects asterisk with UniMRCP and allows asterisk to talk UniMRCP, sorry, MRCP <laughs> with the LumenVox speech services. Um, which will be the, the next step down. So again, um, this is um, installing the, the various modules for Asterisk to be able to talk to the UniMRCP library. Okay, we are back at our uh, console window here. I'm going to change back to the user source folder that we've been using. Um, this time we are going to get a different package. This time it is the asterisk UniRCP package. And again, we're going to be renaming it as part of the download so that we don't end up with a file name called download. And as you can see, it's called asterisk UniRCP, which is much friendlier. Uh, now we're going to unzip it. Didn't take long. Now we're going to change into the um, asterisk UniMRCP folder and run the bootstrap uh, script. Okay, so that prepared for the, the next step, which is the configuration step. So we're doing that. And again, I'm rushing through this here, but some of the details of the command lines that I'm using will actually be in the notes that accompany the video. Um, so again, everything looks good here. Um, we, we are, we're doing good, we're, we're doing great so far. Um, the next part of the process is to actually build the modules. So I'm gonna head and uh, do a make. That didn't take very long. The modules are not very big. Uh, then we're going to do a make install. Again, that didn't take very long. Now, we're going to do some quick sanity checks just to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. So I'm going to have a look at uh, a couple of files just to make sure that they exist where we think they should be. So that's one. Looks good. And these are the configuration files. Now, if something went wrong with the the, the, the last step, um, building the, the modules, um, then that wouldn't have worked for us. So the the, uh, the configuration file would have been missing. So just check that that's there. Yep, another one. I'm going to look in one final location just to verify that the LumenVox profile is where it needs to be. Perfect. Okay, and for the next portion, we're going to be editing some of the configuration files. Um, and what you need to do is have a read of this um, knowledge base article that we have. Um, so again, just navigate to lumenvox.com slash knowledge base and either type in this URI directly or navigate down through the menu to the installing and configuring UniMRCP modules. Now, this is um, very important that you, you look at this page. There are a lot of things in here that um, uh, can, can get very confusing. So what we've done is we've actually highlighted 
the important parts. I'm going to scroll down here and just show you there really aren't too many things um, to go wrong. Now, some of the other documentation that you may have for UniMRCP or Asterisk or some combination thereof um, will allow you to change all kinds of different settings. Uh, to be honest, you're going to end up in all kinds of problems if you're not careful. So what you can do is you can actually cut and paste these uh, configuration files, if you like, straight into your um, into your machine and use these as is. So I'm just going to briefly go over them, um, and then we'll we'll get to the actual editing. Again, these ones are highlighted. Um, if you remember from our first video, we described that the um, the asterisk, UniMRCP, and LumenVox are all going to be on the same machine. Um, so using the defaults of 127.0.0.1, the loopback address is perfectly fine for these settings. Um, if you have your LumenVox on a different machine, then certainly you want to have the LumenVox media server's IP address in here. That is certainly not going to be the loopback address if it's on a different machine. And by the same token, you need to have the local IP address in here if you're communicating with a different uh, machine for the LumenVox services. Since these are both on the same machine, uh, you can leave these defaults the way they are. Um, another important thing to check is to make sure that the server port is configured for 554, which is the MRCP v1 port that LumenVox will be using. Um, we'll go down. The next one is the res speech UniMRCP conf. You just need to make sure that this um, profile, the v1 profile for LumenVox, is uh, uncommented. That should be the only one that's uncommented. Uh, the same thing here for LumenVox.xml. Uh, you want to have the actual um, LumenVox media server's IP address here. Um, in this case, since it's on the local machine, we'll be putting in the loopback uh, 127.0.0.1 address. Uh, and the same thing for the UniMRCP client. This is the actual IP address of the machine. Uh, which in this case is going to be 127.0.0.1 since it's all loopback. Again, a lot of these defaults are fine. Um, you just need to verify this one here. The codecs are set correctly. Again, this is in the UniMRCP client XML file. Just make sure that the codecs are um, as shown here. Um, there are a variety of different ones that are available. Just make sure that this one is the one that's, uh, that's uncommented. So again, just... Um, Go through and make sure that um, you have all of these files uh, configured as described in this page. It's worth taking a few moments just to read through and not rely on my uh, my words here. Just kind of read through what's going on and it kind of describes what some of these files do. Um, so you you uh, you need to follow these instructions. The reason be straightforward, but if you don't configure these correctly, um, bad things will happen. Okay, so let's walk through the process here. So the first File, the first configuration file we're going to be modifying is this um, mrcp.conf file. And um, you can find the location to it up here. So we're just going to go ahead and edit this file. So again, going back to the, the web page, unfortunately, I can't really show you both at the same time. So the things that we're, that we're concerned about here are the um, IP address of the media server and the IP address of the local machine, and also the server port address. So let's go down and take a look at those. Uh, excellent. So we have these uh, set incorrectly. So let's go ahead and change those. So that's 127. Oops. So... Let's see, so 127.0.0.1 is our loopback address. I want to make sure that the port number is 554. And the next one is the, um, the address of the machine itself. So again, this one's to be 127.0.0.1. So just to take a quick look at everything else. Um, that all looks good. In fact, you know what? Let me exit this. I'm going <laughs> to 
I'm going to change my mind here. So I'm going to just empty that file. Yes, it sounds drastic. Because it looked as though it didn't really have what we wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and open uh, the blank file since we just destroyed it. Uh, you could obviously just uh, go in there and delete everything. So I'm just going to copy all of this because I know these settings are correct. Perfect. Oops. Let's take a look and verify that our uh, IP addresses are correct. So we've got 127.0.0.1. 554-127-001. Definitely recommend you cut and paste as I just did, just to make sure that you have the correct profile there. Um, if you remember from the last one, there was a different profile in here, and that's not what you want. So again, just cut and paste um, these settings and you won't go wrong. So we're saving that one. Let's see. The next thing we wanna do is edit the um, res speech Unium RCP. Okay, back to our web page. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this one as well. And since I'm at the top of the file, I'm just going to hit uh, GG, is it? Come on. Okay, GG to get to the top and then DG capital. D capital G. Come on now. There we go. Wow. Not sure what was going on there. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and insert. This is the, uh, the content that we copied from our other page right here. And again, we're just verifying that uh, the UniMRCP profile v1 is the LumenVox v1. This is this is the line that needs to be uncommented. Everything else is fine the way it is. So go ahead and save this file. And the next one is the LumenVox.xml file. So this is the one. Let's again just verify what we're changing in our web page. So we have just this one entry here, the server IP. So we'll go ahead and we'll see that it's uh, commented out here. So we'll go ahead and put that in. I think leaving it as the default is probably fine if it's using the loopback. I think it'll use that by default, but let's go ahead and put it in anyway. And again, if you were, um, uh, if you had the the LumenVox uh, machine uh, on a different uh, IP address, you would put that in here. And once again, the port is 554 to match the other setting. That's it for that file. And the next file we want to edit is the UniMRCP client.xml, which lives in this location here. So we will go ahead and edit that one. Okay, so let's see, back to our web page, just to verify what it is we're checking. There's two things in this file. So we wanna make sure that the IP address that's specified under properties is set to the loopback address. Uh, again, that would be the actual IP address of this machine if LumenVox was on a different machine. And we wanna make sure that the codecs selected are the same as shown here. So uh, PCMU, PCMA are the main ones on telephone event and uh, eight kilohertz. So let's check this IP address first. So that should be towards the top under properties. So IP address is currently commented out. Again, I think if you leave it as the default, it will just use the loopback address, but we'll go ahead and put it in here anyway. 27001 is the, the loopback address. Uh, once again, if 
uh, LumenVox was elsewhere on a different machine, you would want the local um, asterisk IP address in here. So the next thing is to go down and look at the codex. Uh, where are they at? So down here we got the codex. So we got PCMU, PCMA, 8 kilohertz. So this looks good to me. Um, again, you should verify that it is the same as this. And once you've done that, then we can go ahead and uh, save that file as well. So we have uh, everything installed that we need that we need to have installed. Uh, now we can run uh, asterisk uh, and verify that uh, that things are good with the asterisk university modules. So running the uh, asterisk console here. So launch the console with some verbosity, uh, not running. So we'll do minus R, minus R. Okay, we've got it running and now we have the asterisk uh, client window open. So the thing we wanna do here is um, verify that the modules that we built and configured um, are actually registered with um, asterisk. And as you see here, they're not loaded. So what we're going to do is go ahead and do a um, core, oops, core restart now to uh, restart asterisk. Um, we will um, <laughs> see. Uh, go ahead and open the, the console window again and uh, repeat the process, which is a, um, to display uh, modules like MRCP. And as you see, there are now two listed. So restarting asterisk that we just did um, forced the loading of these two modules. And you can see their status is running. So this is um, really good. We're actually in, in, in really good shape now. So let's recap where we're at. We've actually installed asterisk, we've installed uh, PJSIP, we've installed the dependencies for UniMRCP, we've installed UniMRCP library, and now we have just installed and configured the asterisk UniMRCP modules. So as far as asterisk and UniMRCP are concerned, they are all set up to be able to talk to LumenVox. So now we are clear to proceed to the next step, step six, which is installing and configuring LumenVox. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.